So it's been a minute ever since I last posted a video on this YouTube channel and I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. Let's just get to the video. Frederick Wallace Smith, founder of FedEx, did not get off to a good start in life. At the age of four, his father passed away and for the first 10 years of his life, Fred was afflicted with a type of childhood arthritis called Perthes disease. All right, to get started with this, as we're breaking it down, you'll see that we have three clips. Number one is the clip where we're talking about the gentleman as we're introducing him, the name, the founder, word, and then the picture. And then the second clip is a clip where we are talking about him losing his father at the age of four. And then the third clip is the clip where we are talking about that disease he had when he was still young. So basically, I'm just going to break it down to what I think is easy. This is just going to be like a trick of camera, knowing how to play around with a 3D object, position them into the 3D space until we actually get the thing identical to what we are seeing in this video we've just seen. So basically, when you look at this, you will see in the first place, you have Mr. Wallace and then everything just happens like that. This is very easy, though it just has a bit of wiggle and it's like a handheld camera motion. Behind, we have the background of FedEx as you can see it around here but I didn't choose it exactly the way it is because even in the original it wasn't looking like this so there were some bit of effects which were put on it and there are also overlays which were also added to it so when I open up the background layer you'll see down here we do have different colors all these colors were being driven by a tint effect when I click on it and then we check here on the effects control you will see so basically that's how we did it and then inside the background there is still another thing or something which is is actually happening in the background and that's the text which are keeping on flickering on and off they have different colors some are just strokes so basically in order to pull that off you have to open up the flickering text i pre-composed it so that i can make it very easy you will see that some are big some are small and then you can see they keep on going on and off some are just a stroke so it's just a couple of layers which were put on and off where i don't want it there i just cut it off so that it just creates that effect of flickering you know when you put it together it kind of looks so complicated but then when you try to break it down it's just very simple so next it's the name frederick wallace smith so it's just a text though inside the text we do have this thing it's more like the rgb split i don't know whether it's called that when you look at it in the background you will see there is some bit of text which is a bit yellowish which is offset from the actual word but doesn't make any more difference from what i actually saw though it kind of looked like what i was going for it looked like how it was in the original so i decided to just go along with it but now that's how it is and they are all 3d objects oh i didn't explain why these or how i made these words glow I just added a glow effect when I go back into this flickering thing you will see that I just added a glow effect on every text which is supposed to be glowing all right and then the entire pre-composition of flickering text I changed the blending mode to screen so that it kind of interacts with the background you get the point now you may be wondering how did I make this camera shake like it's more like a handheld camera. Basically what I did, I just opened up a new now object and inside that now object, I introduced two slider controls. I just went to the effect, though I prefer using the FX console from Video Copilot. So I created two slider controls when I named it frequency and then the amplitude. And then when I came here, I opened my very own now object after parenting the camera which was going to be driving this entire 3d sequence and then i had to bring in that shake effect so then i typed wiggle this was an expression which i used and then i pick whipped it hit it here to this and then just pick whipped is it pick whipped <laughs> it's so funny and also when it came to this now you will see that on this side we do have inside our transformation i went to the position this null object was also a 3d object so what i did i had to just separate the dimensions after separating the dimensions it's vertical x is alone y is alone and then z is alone so I only applied the wiggle effect on the X axis. So basically that's how the shake effect was done. And then you will see that this camera shake effect stops somewhere because I only wanted to shake up to a certain point. I didn't want it to affect that coming scene. 
all right then the second part it's more like just a 3d camera you get so i just got these pictures i've actually put everything in the description down below so when i go back to the project files so you see these are all photoshop layers and when i open them up here you will see that i took them in photoshop and then i started separating them and then i decided to fill the parts which i had removed with the content awareness fill so that's how i did this other part and the reason why it kind of looks like it's a bit pale i just added a tint effect and then i just reduced the amount to 80 percent on each and every layer so that's why it's not completely green because when i shut it off you will see that's now back to green when i put it back on you will see that it brings back its original color or it just brings this color which is a bit pale or which is a bit desaturated and then when you come back here there is a word it's also made a 3d object now you see the way the camera is moving it has a way it moves it's like it rotates and then it reveals what's there this is the camera which is doing it so when i open my camera here you'll see that i'm having two parameters which are changing two variables actually we have the point of interest the position the orientation and then as it comes it comes uh, and then does that stuff the camera that i used in this edit it is the 24 millimeter camera and it's just doing all that so yeah this is just easy stuff just playing around with a 3d camera and all that you will see the project file i'll put it there you'll play around with it you'll try to open it up and see how you can also change it or see how you can un understand how it was made and then you'll see here there is a word down here we have the layer style and then i put the drop shadow so that's how it went for this part you know something which actually took me the longest time to pull off it was this motion from the graveyard to the surgeons you see i was using the camera to do this but then it wasn't working you know i needed to use something different you know that's even why i called it a complex move <laughs> i opened up a null object or i got a null object i made it 3d and then created keyframes here and now you're seeing like we're having three variables which are changing number one we're having the anchor point the position and then the orientation so it moves this is the one that is controlling this motion after making this move it was more like a transition from one scene to another but then it was like a continuation so basically this was like a single take and it was just a complete seamless continuation to something different hope that made sense and now when we reach this point after making this move which was complex then i brought back the camera as you can see i created these keyframes so that i can get where the camera is gonna start and now the camera what it did it started zooming in and while it is also changing its orientation that's why here you're seeing that we're having the point of interest, the position, and then the orientation. You understand? So when you come back here, you'll see the orientation is at 30. And then when we bring it towards the end, it gets to 40. It's more like it's rotating a bit and then it's zooming or it's pushing in. And as these words are coming in. But now there's a question. How did I get these words to be flying like that? Actually, it was just done by including or by bringing in, you know, like when you open up the text effect, it always has this animate that you just have to pick something. So based on the original video or based on the original thing, you will see that there are two things which are changing. The position of the text, they are coming out from out and then they were also rotating so what i thought was the right way to do it i just had to get the position and then i got the rotation and then for the word this path is disease you'll see it's more like the same thing i also animated it but also for this one i used position and then offset why did i use offset because i wanted this first text to come and then also another text to come sometimes you have to always change this there is always this uh this setting you have to change if you don't change it you'll always bring each character individually but then when you want to bring the entire world at the same time you have to look for advanced then you the default is characters but then you just have to change it to words you understand so this offset thing was helping me to first consider this one as the first word and then it also brings in the other one as the second word so when i open it up here you will see let me first expand it so this is the keyframe which is controlling the offset so yeah
Uh, this is rather a very simple and very straightforward video, but hope you guys like it. I like the way you guys you've subscribed to my channel and I hope you guys subscribe more. I have a lot of stuff that I've put into store for you. If you guys stay and keep on watching these videos, I'll be greatly, greatly appreciative and I would continue making content which is as important and helpful to you guys. Thank you for watching and I hope I'll catch you in my next video. Bye-bye.